Have you ever wondered why so many designers use Keyshot for rendering? After spending nearly a decade learning all about 3D rendering, I've become familiar with the 3D software landscape. And unless you know all the major software programs and how they relate to one another, it can be hard to understand how they differ and which tools might be right for you. Well, that's about to change, my friend. If you've never heard of Keyshot, it's a standalone progressive real-time render engine known for its ease of use and it's become an industry standard tool among industrial designers. So here's why I think Keyshot has become the go-to rendering tool for designers. First, we have utility. See, Keyshot emerged as a simple rendering tool to help CAD users create realistic images of their designs with. These renderings are then often used within companies to make design decisions or for documentation such as pitch decks, CMF documents, or instruction manuals. Next, we have ease of use. Keyshot was built to be used by design professionals, not visual effects specialists or programmers. Many of Keyshot's users are actually designers, or CAD professionals, not full-time render artists. Generally speaking, Keyshot was designed to be a quick step in the process of bringing products to market. Then we have compatibility. The decision to create Keyshot as a standalone software made it unique. Most render engines exist as plugins and they require a host application to operate within. Keyshot doesn't. You simply run Keyshot on its own and you import a 3D model and you're rendering. Keyshot will also import more than 40 different 3D file formats, making it easy to use with data from various modeling software. Finally, I'll mention CAD friendliness. Many CAD programs use a language called NURBS, non-uniform rational B-splines, and they use this to define surfaces in 3D forms. If you're familiar with how vector differs from raster graphics, then think of NURBS as the vector equivalent of 3D data. CAD programs help designers make quick and accurate revisions to 3D forms. CAD data is optimized for use in processes and technologies specific to manufacturing. To take a CAD model created for manufacturing and be able to use it for rendering streamlines the entire process of going from model to photoreal visual. This means the files created by an engineering team can be dropped right into Keyshot for rendering, which isn't often the case with other rendering tools. Now, if you like what you're learning so far, be sure to download my free Keyshot rendering roadmap. It'll help you create better renderings in minutes, and you'll be added to my email list where you'll get free articles, videos, and other deals on my paid courses. Now that I've made a strong case for using Keyshot, why would anyone use anything else? Well, Keyshot isn't without its limitations. For some people, Keyshot does everything they need and more. For others, Keyshot is unable to produce the visuals they need. So let's look at a few of Keyshot's limitations. First, we have simulation. Keyshot can't create soft body fluid, smoke, or advanced rigid body simulations. There is a physics simulation tool, but in its current form, it's mostly useful for creating piles of objects or settling an object onto an uneven surface. That said, Keyshot's technically able to render most simulations so long as they're actually created in a different program and then properly exported and import it into Keyshot. Next, we have advanced animation. Keyshot actually offers quite a few animation transforms and recently added keyframe animations. However, if you're looking for tools that make it easy to animate lots of objects quickly or add variation or randomness or animate size or scale or dimensions, you will need to look elsewhere. And if reverse kinematics is important to you, that's also not supported. Now, what about particle systems? They allow you to generate many objects in a scene based off of a single parent object. For example, a forest of trees, a pile of Halloween candy, droplets of water or condensation on a beverage can. Particle systems save you from creating thousands of similar objects and typically create proxies or lightweight placeholders of the child objects. This keeps the 3D tool running smoothly and only reveals the full detail of the particle system at the time of render. While particle systems are handy, they are not a feature Keyshot supports. And how about rendered output? Well, anyone rendering digital assets that are handed off to a retoucher, a 3D artist, a compositor, editor, or digital agency needs to have advanced control over their final output. Being able to define things like color space, bit depth, color gamut, gamma, and more ensures that the final imagery looks correct and matches the other media it will be used with. So features like physical camera controls, film emulation tools, OCIO profile, and multi-layered EXR support are just a few examples that feel like they're missing here from Keyshot. Finally, I'll mention integration. 
Sure, Keyshot has some plugins that allow you to send a model from one CAD program into Keyshot, but that's about as far as it goes with integration. The ability to make alterations to a model or a 3D scene while working in the rendering environment is a huge element missing here. Because it's a standalone software, every time you want to make a change to your model or add to your scene, you pretty much need to use another software to do that, then re-import the assets back into Keyshot. And this is one of the main reasons most other render engines are just plugins that operate within a 3D application. It just speeds everything up. So these limitations are some of the reasons I believe that some Keyshot users eventually turn to other software for 3D rendering and animation. Now I wanna take a minute to share my classification of CGI. This makes it easy to map specific software to specific needs, making it easier for you to understand what software might be a good fit for you. So here's a brief description of the six distinct categories of CGI that I could come up with. Engineering drawings are for creating simple, accurate diagrams to help define the dimensions and form of an object to be manufactured. CAD rendering uses simple colored shading with basic shadows and highlights to help describe the form and texture of an object. Industrial design rendering relies on physically based material appearances and light simulation to provide a reasonably realistic rendition of an object. Product visualization showcases photorealistic visuals of products in context or fully detailed environments, either stylized or realistic, and is used in public facing marketing collateral. Visual effects shows a product interacting with various simulations or undergoing complex form transformations to enhance storytelling and to be visually captivating. And visual art demonstrates highly realistic visuals of both abstract and real world elements and heavy use of metaphor to tell the story of an object or a brand and plays out like a scene from a movie. So as this image shows, I've attempted to position some popular render engines relative to each of these categories of CGI. Now remember, there's no hard and fast rule here. This is purely my opinion based on my observations. So if Keyshot is somewhere in the middle here on this chart and the software to the right seems to be a little more capable, then why do so many designers use Keyshot? Now to answer this, we have to discuss something called the rendering pipeline and why it matters. See, pipeline refers to the chain of tools or the steps in a process often involving specialized software. And you'd probably be surprised at how many different software is used in creating really high-end CGI. Remember earlier when I mentioned Keyshot plays well with CAD? Well, when it comes to physical goods, rendering is used throughout the product development cycle to have a rough idea of what the final product will look like. It takes little cost or effort to take the CAD model and render it out. So let's briefly discuss DCC plugin render engines. A DCC is a digital content creation software such as 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, Blender, or Modo. If you need to render or animate anything on the list of limitations that I mentioned earlier in this video, such as particle simulations, deformations, reverse kinematics, or need more granular control over the rendered media, then you'll likely need to rely on a polygonal-based DCC. Many features within these tools are made specifically for creating visual effects used in film and television. Let's say you use a particle system in 3ds Max and V-Ray to render your scene. Because V-Ray is fully integrated with 3ds Max, it is capable of rendering those particles correctly. So what's the downside? If it's not obvious already, using a DCC means creating a pipeline that incorporates new software. These tools can have a steep learning curve that most designers do not have time to master while juggling their existing tools and responsibilities. Additionally, it means managing a library of 3D models and assets used for rendering outside of the CAD data used for production. This is because many of these popular DCCs are not NURBS based, they're polygonal based. They use an entirely different 3D language that many CAD tools do not. Imagine having to recreate 3D models from the engineering team in an entirely different software before even being able to render it. So by now you should see that comparing Keyshot to other popular render engines is kind of tough. Now, this may be controversial, but I will claim that neither Keyshot nor CAD software were ever originally intended to create truly photorealistic images of objects. This seems especially true when it comes to organic stuff like plants, worn wood, concrete, woven textiles, carpet, fur, rocks, dirt, skin, fire, and other detailed environments that typically bring CGI to life. These are all elements of visual effects often used in films. Now don't get me wrong, Keyshot can create some very realistic images, but it's mostly used for simple product rendering. 
If you are expected to create completely photorealistic scenes full of complexity and organic materials and objects, then other tools will make your life easier. Some designers catch the render bug and decide to specialize in 3D rendering and animation. Yeah, kind of speaking of myself here. It wasn't long before I was asked to create visuals that I couldn't create with Keyshot alone. So it's not uncommon for designers to learn visual effects software or other DCCs once they choose to become a render artist. It's kind of a parting of ways with the industrial design rendering. New tools allow you to continue to grow your skills and determine what clients you can work with moving forward. On the other hand, if rendering is not your sole focus and you're a product designer or an engineer, then Keyshot's a great tool. It especially shines when having to replace product photography or when rendering lots of variations of a product for e-commerce or packaging, for example. And as long as you don't need to combine the rendered frames with live action footage captured on a camera, then Keyshot is a great choice. So back to the original question, why do so many designers use Keyshot? I think it comes down to mainly ease of use, how fast Keyshot makes it to create a nice image, and that it plays nicely with CAD data. All this saves money in the long run. Hopefully this video answers some questions about render engines and why certain industries seem to favor certain software. Oftentimes it comes down to a combination of software capabilities and whether or not it fits into an existing pipeline. Integrating new software tools can be extremely expensive and cumbersome and interrupt existing product development timelines and deadlines. While I will admit there's always room for improvement, Keyshot has largely filled a gap that makes it quick and easy for designers to render their ideas and share their vision of what the product will look like. And for those who need to go beyond Keyshot's capabilities, there are plenty of options, but creating a new pipeline and carving out time to refine the process and learn the skills of new software is always a big undertaking. And until next time, happy rendering.